previously on the LCS. This is going to be a through the front door face race. Oh my god! He win the game by going in through the front door over 80 minutes. Soul Shackle coming out from Aframu. He gets the lockdown before he goes down. That's the crowd control they needed to follow through with the fight. Perfectly played for their area of effect. Lemon Nation gets a hundred health hook to keep himself alive as well. LMQ is going to have a win against every team in the league. Under 26 minutes, 21 to 5. Victory, LMQ over Dignitas. Welcome, one and all, to the North American LCS Summer Split. We're beaming out to you live from our studio home in Los Angeles with more league action. And if yesterday's any indication, viewers should expect the unexpected. Hello, I'm James Dash Patterson, and joining me at the analyst desk is Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler and Mr. David Freak Turley. How are you guys doing today? I got a Mr. in front of my name. That's awesome. Now I'm doing great. Way better than moving up in the world, Freak. Woo! I got a title. <laughs> Of course, Riv and Jat will join us shortly to get us into our first match. But before that, let's start with the obvious. Longest game ever. Now, Kobe, you were casting that game with Riv. What are your lasting impressions of that marathon win by Complexity? Hmm. Well, first thing I would say is anybody playing against Complexity, you probably want to upgrade your Magic Razor before you get 30 stacks, just on the off chance that you end up in an 80-minute game <laughs> where it would be useful. For me, I like that uh, in the pregame, Robert X. Lee was telling uh, Curse that it was either you guys win in 20 minutes or we win in 60. Thankfully, they put the two together. 20 plus, plus 60 equals 80, and everyone wins when a game goes that long. What a prediction. Basic math, just so strong here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for a little perspective, though, on how long and how historic that battle was, let's pull up some numbers. It was the longest game, clocking in at one hour, 20 minutes, and 37 seconds. And in that time, Robert X. Lee established a couple records of his own. Getting the most CS in a single game was 719, and the most gold by a single player was just shy of 32,000. Now, Complexity as a whole raked in the most gold by a team with 129.5 thousand. However, not to be outdone, Quas broke his own record for most CS by a top laner with 691, and he did that without dying. Well, as long as we're uh, throwing out stats here, I did a little research myself, and during that game, 19,950 babies were born, 1,680,000 pieces of pizza were eaten, and 360,000 Teemos died. That's a lot of pizza and a lot of Teemos. All right, taking a step back from that game, though, and looking at the bigger picture, complexity are just one game out of a playoff spot. Now, they've responded to the increased pressure of expectations, and if you don't take them out early, they're going to challenge you late. Yeah, this is the interesting thing about this team, is they are 6-1 and one in games over 37 minutes long. That means they're 1-11 before that, to be fair, but... Uh, <laughs> This speaks to me that their in-game instincts are incredibly sound. You've got uh, seasoned veterans like West Rice and probably in there who just sort of have played pro games that go this long. Scrims and pro games are actually very different, so it's hard to get exposure to games like this. And they just make the right choices like very late into the game. Hmm. The thing that stands out to me, though, is not they're not really trying to go late here. I mean, they had an early game team, and they played well early. I yeah. mean, they controlled all four of the early dragons, and they got a nice lead. But they're so scared of this Rengar-Ori combo that they weren't able to finish it out, and it just kind of went late. But they do have an impressive record late. Yeah, that's for sure. It's working out for them. Absolutely. Now, up at the top of the standings, we have CLG and LMQ. Both had convincing wins yesterday, and they're the only two teams that have beaten every other team in the league. Now, the big question is, are they there to stay? 
hmm, you know what? I think it's really hard to say that anyone is going to stay in the number one spot right now just because it's so close. And specifically CLG, Link put out a very interesting blog recently about how, you know, they know that they have problems and they're not exactly sure what to practice on in order to improve. And yeah. so that could be a scary thing for them. Yeah, it's the weird thing about this split of the LCS. You've got like seven teams that could legitimately take first place. Like, Complexity has a really good chance of making the playoffs. Curse could very well take first place by the, end, by the end of it all and get that first round by. I think LMQ and CLG specifically will make top four, but I don't know who's going to be in that, in that standing overall, though. All right, well, one of those teams that could challenge them for the top slot, we got to talk about the two-time defending champs. And they continue to experiment with their champion pool, and they look like they might be getting some of their swagger back. Yeah, Cloud9 looks a heck of a lot better really recently. Now, you can't say for sure how good they are because EG is the weakest team in the league right now, so a lot of teams look really good against EG, to be fair. But if Cloud9 can actually keep the individual performances working, high played really well, the bottom lane is staying consistent, Balls is playing well, finally. Uh, if this team can fix their sort of morale issues where they're so down on themselves for not being the best team anymore, they're going to keep going up and they will be the best team again. I think you do have to commend them for their individual performances, but really also look at how are they doing this. In their last two games, Cloud9 have come out with different strategies tailored to the new meta. He used Nunu twice, Meteos, in the jungle, which has helped them out a lot. I mean, having balls on a damage-dealing top laner is much more uh, in his comfort zone, and Meteos gets to do what he wants, control the vision, and also, with the uh, state of 80 carries right now being more important with the recent patches, Blood Boil is more important, and the Ice Blast for slowing down your enemy's 80 carries. So, all around, it's, it looks like Cloud9 have done a good job incorporating some new strategies. Absolutely. It looks like they might be returning to form. And now it's time, though, to check in with hashtag LCS Big Plays to see what you've been talking about. Yeah, first up, we have uh, the longest game in the LCS history. The 81-minute end of the game between Curse and Complexity. At Mathis, uh, Lundell1 says, Holy moly, Complexity front door. x -Peke, watch out. Here's your number three. Robert's going around the side. They're looking to end they it. They could look to finish Nexus it. Do you see Robert? Nexus. They got a Nexus turret to end the game. This is going to be a through the front door face race. They are trying to get Oh, the my God. Robert goes for the shots. He's got a black shield to stay alive. He still has no summoners, actually. Few more. They win the game by going in through the front door. What was really incredible about that was how close they actually came to losing that game. You saw the Nexus turn invulnerable from the inhibitor respawn that West Rice killed. And he was saying he didn't even know that he had to kill that to like win the game. He's just like, I'm just going to hit an inhibitor because that's what I'm trained to do that, as a player. That was my, oh my god. Yeah. I remember it like it was yesterday. I <laughs> <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, guys, from the same game, we have another one at the Uncanny Snail. The God ADC Cop. The kiting was so real. He was your number two. West Rice has been able to slice and dice at least three times in this fight. It has gone so long. A great job by Kaz. Oh, Rose Cop down four. Cop's still staying alive. One last shot. A few more for West Rice. The Akathian surprise. <laughs> if nothing, will take him down. And Cop is going to stay alive in the fight. Cop is firing this whole time. He flashes over the wall away from Kez. He relies on Quas to come in with the flash body slam for the kiting. And he just runs barely out of range. I gotta say, my favorite part of that is the confidence to have the, to flash back into that fight and finish it off. Now finally, we've got your favorite. From LMQ versus Dig, Ackerman hides in a bush. You like this one so much that we're gonna read several of your tweets while we watch this compelling action from your number one. <laughs> Skiffington writes, that's going to have to be the tamest, yet most ingenious LCS big play this season for Ackerman. At Melt Othini says, the funniest thing I've ever seen in LCS, that top lane stealth Gragas. My day is made. And at Puppets AMA says, LMQ's Ackerman is the most patient drunk man I've ever seen. I guess you could say he really had them over a barrel. <laughs> You could say uh, he might have been there for a happy hour. I, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't. <laughs> okay, the second one I'll give you. i give you the second one. That's fine. All right. Well, don't be caught dozing yourselves, or you might miss more of those big moments in today's action. If you see something that leaves you speechless, though, share it with us, at Lolly Sports, and use the hashtag LCSBigPlace. 
But if you're looking for, to rewatch the entire game and not just the highlights, head over to lolesports.com. And click on the VODs tab to find a completely redesigned hub that's easy to use and allows you to quickly find all your favorite matches from the year. And spoiler alert, you can get your replays with or without spoilers. <laughs> Look at that. Anyway, turning to today's action, let's see how the table is set. In first, it's CLG and LMQ. And then in third, it's Cloud9, Dignitas, and TSM, followed by Curse in sixth and Complexity in seventh. And in eighth place, it's Evil Geniuses. We'll see which teams can make moves in our four games today, starting with Curse versus Evil Geniuses, followed by Dignitas facing off against CounterLogic Gaming. And after that, Cloud9 will take to the Rift to battle TSM and will conclude our LCS day with Complexity versus LMQ. But stick around for a best of three quarterfinal between Team 8 and Zenith Esports in our North American Challenger Series coverage. All right, then we want to jumpstart the conversation over on Twitter with our question of the day. We're asking you, which NALCS player do you like to see interviewed the most and why? Right, send your thoughts to at LO Esports and use the hashtag LCS so that we can find your answers and read them later in the show. All right, we're going to sneak away for a brief break, but when we return, it's on to the game, starting with Curse versus Evil Geniuses. Don't